I recently completed my second camper build and honestly guys when it comes down to camper build choosing the right power station is so important as it's going to simplify your wiring and also the amount of weight you have to carry so it could affect your gas mileage and a lot more so make sure you guys stick around during this video as I'm going to help you guys better prepare for your next van build and show you guys some of the things that I've learned about power stations and why there are certain power stations that just have a much better setup for a moving 12 volt vehicle. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Fix. So I'm happy to report that the Sprinter is all done. And not only is it done, it's taking some road trips to New Mexico, Colorado, parts of Texas. And also, I think, yeah, I think it's been to Louisiana because that's where I purchased from. But this video is going to be all about power stations as I have tested quite a few power stations and from building out the camper van I have realized that people that build camper vans or are going to be full timing in RVs they need a different sort of power station not these power stations here as these are great for home use, occasional camping but moving vehicles are completely different because they have an alternator and honestly most of the electronics on these vehicles are based on 12 volt so wiring and everything else is going to be completely different so let me flip the camera around and I'm going to talk about your everyday power station and some of the advantages and some things that maybe are not going to be great for moving vehicles because they're based on 12 volts. All right guys, so here I have two power stations. And again, I have tested numerous power stations from all different makes and 99% of them all have one thing in common. They are gonna give you some sort of power outlets for 120 volts, just like this. They'll give you a limited DC power output. So this is 10 amps right here and four amps here and then it has some USB plugs right here so some of them are really nice they have USB ports that can handle 100 watts and you can use them even to power up your laptop and they may look different but they all pretty much are the same internally as 99% of power stations go and convert the energy that you put in and they store it at either 48 volts or 50 something volts and whenever you're using it they'll go through and use that high voltage again to convert it down to low voltage and they'll use an inverter to give you household power. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and if you guys find another power station that can do what I'm about to show you guys please let me know honestly guys just like you guys I'm learning as well and I don't know everything but I know what I know from testing all these power stations and some things they lack. These are great for around the house and I also use this as my home backup power. It's awesome. But when it came down to the camper van, guys, I had to choose something different because of this limited DC output here. And I have searched high and low and thought about combining units to get the result that I'm about to show you guys from a unit that delivered and it was so easy to set up. And so for example, this unit right here has about 2,150 watt hours from memory. This one right here has about 2,000 watt hours and this weighs 40 pounds, this weighs 50 pounds. So weight is another important part. If I was looking to put in a lot of power into the camper van, cause I have a 12 volt air conditioner and I live in Texas guys, so it is really hot. Everything that I use in my van is going to be 12 volt unless it's really expensive. So my TV is 12 volt, my air conditioner is 12 volt, my heaters are 12 volt. And the only things that are not 12 volt is going to be my induction, my convection and my water heater. The rest of the van, whether it's going to be the little lights up top or the lights underneath, this is all on 12 volts. 
and as the vehicle drives, the alternator basically supplies 12 volts and it even charges up my power stations. Additionally, I have solar on top. So let me show you guys that because that's going to be a big part of your camper or RV build. As solar is pretty cheap now and right now I have 400 watts up top and right here in the corner of the van there's a plug that pulls out and I'm able to go and pull out a cord and I have another 400 watts of solar that I hook up and use when I'm boondocking for a very long time. And again, that's 800 watts. So I could run the AC off that and I'm actually still charging, which is great. There's gonna be a shore power plug here in case you guys are asking how I'm gonna charge my portable power stations that supply power to the van. So far, we have talked about how these units actually store energy at a higher voltage. They're not native 12 volts. Now, let's go and talk about simplicity. So these portable power stations for the house, they're easy to use, but when it comes down to the car, they're limited because they come with a 120 volt adapter and some of the new units actually have a 1000 watt adapter and they're charging quite a bit of money for it. But when you grab one of those, you're still gonna have to configure it. And that can be challenging. And then every single time that I've noticed I've used one of these particular portable power stations in a camper van, I don't like Bluetooth as it's not 100% reliable. So I like things that are wired, that are gonna be reliable as I don't wanna tear the van apart every single time there's gonna be some sort of glitch. And again, I don't wanna open up a million ma manuals to get these to talk to each other. And the sad truth is, even though these two are the same brands, they can't talk to each other. That's gonna be hard for me to keep grabbing the same portable power station down the line as it may no longer be made. And I'm gonna to have to start jerry-rigging everything. And that is not fun and can just cause havoc on the system. Now let me turn this around and I'll show you guys my portable power station that I decided to go with. Again, there's three portable power stations underneath here. This right here is a 3000 watt hour portable power station and it's 12 volts. And what that means is when I ran a refrigerator on here at 12 volts, it actually pulled almost 99.99 percent of capacity if not over capacity because it's 12 volt it doesn't have a lot of efficiency loss and next to that I have a 4,000 watt hour unit and at the very end that's a 6,000 watt hour unit now both of these have an inverter built in the smaller one and the one in the middle I'm only using the inverter on one so I have one just in case anything ever happens ready to go everything here is connected via 12 volts so on the back of these units, they come with these Anderson 120 connectors and you can buy them yourself and they basically just daisy chain into each other. So I'm able to go and make a really remarkable power unit that acts as one. And I'll show you guys the brains of it up front, then I'll come back here. So again, let's add loss of efficiency with your standard power station to the list of disadvantages. And this is it guys. This is gonna be my screen and there's not much to it. If I click on this, I have a total of three packs. So the one that is 6,000 watt hours, I called it unit number six. The one that is 4,000, I called it unit number four. And number three has 3,000 watt hours of power. That is it. When I'm in a camper van, this is all I need to see. I need to be able to see the discharge and the charge. So right now I have quite a few things on because I have the lights up top, the rack lights, the water pump is on, but I can quickly turn all that off. And there's a lot more benefits to this as I'm about to show you guys in a little bit. But up here, this is how I control that switch. Not for the power station, just for that unit that operates some of my 12 volt electronics. 
these 12 volt electronic units, they're pretty cool as they have remotes that can work really far away. So if I'm out camping or at the dunes, I was just at the dunes in Colorado, I can go through and activate the lights. I can activate underglow lights, sirens, discharge pumps. It's all here. And they even have apps for your phone. Again, 12 volt has many different components that are not expensive anymore. Again, for example, my monitor here is 12 volts. And back in the days, 12 volt components were expensive. They're no longer expensive. This cost me under 125 bucks. Only weighs five pounds. And barely consumes three amps of power. And that switch, again, is powered off here. And then I have a 12 volt amplifier underneath the passenger side seat. And I can turn it on even when the sprinter is completely off. And there's a switch. Additionally, there's lots of cool things I can do with the lights. So for example, I'm controlling the lights right now using the Mercedes-Benz switch. And then I can turn them on right there if I need to. Since it's 12 volts, I can do a lot more things and customize my van. So for example, I could install these momentary switches by the bed, outside here, towards the back of the van, wherever and these cost 50 cents. And since my power stations are 12 volt, I can get a cheap 12 volt heater like that for under 30 bucks. That puts out a ton of hot air and honestly, it's super reliable. Doesn't have many components to it. And if it ever breaks, I'll get another one for 30 bucks. But I've tested this long and hard and it worked. Now you might be asking yourself, what are the advantages of these power stations with 12 volt vehicles? Well, it comes down to charging guys. So each one of these units actually came with one of these 30 amp chargers. And there's a smart charger. There it is right there. I normally just run one. When I'm driving, it turns on automatically. And when I'm not, it will stop being used. If I ever really need to charge my batteries more, I can go through, hit that button, and now that is on. I oftentimes don't ever charge this way, but it's an option and it's really easy to configure that way. On top of everything else that I showed you guys, I can use this to keep my vehicle's battery in a healthy state by a simple relay. And again, maybe it's gonna cost me five, 10 bucks, but whenever the vehicle's off, and the voltage on the vehicle's battery goes down, this will go ahead and help out. Again, it's got a small five, 10, even a 25 amp fuse you can use, and it keeps the vehicle always running. You don't need a jump start. And these things are strong enough to jump start a tank, each one of these units by themselves, because of that Anderson 120 connector. And I'm trying to show you guys it right there. It's towards the back. And I just built this little wooden platform so I can still utilize this area. And the reason I kept it down here is because in the winter, I am planning on going to the snow. Even though I live in Texas, I miss the snow. So you guys are probably wondering what are the advantages of this unit in the snow. So let's jump back into the regular power stations as we're going to talk about the cold. If I take these units right here to the cold, I'm going to have an issue because these particular units don't have cold weather protection. Oftentimes when it hits 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, these basically, they'll stop charging. Some of them stop working and I'm going to be out of luck. My solar is not going to do me any good because they're not going to charge. Even if I hook up my extra panel underneath. So now I'm going to be stuck out in the cold without heat. And I can tell you guys from sleeping in, a camper van like this before I put the insulation in even in 40 to 50 degree weather guys it turns into an ice box at zero degree weather it's going to turn into a, a freezer so these batteries are a little bit different as not only are they better they actually have cold weather protection built in so as soon as I start charging these they have a little heating pad an element that heats up and basically will keep the batteries in a safe state so they don't actually get damaged. So I can A, 
use this in the summertime like I am in Texas here and I cool these off with the extra auxiliary fan it's right there there's the unit that actually controls the fans and there's the fan so I think I spent maybe $16 on the two fans and the controller and again it's 12 volts nothing really to it just make sure you always put a fuse in it works heat no problem cold no problem high discharge no problem I'm expecting to get about 10 years of use out of these before I really have to do anything. When it comes down to these units, I said 10 years before I do something, as these are actually serviceable. So what that means is these are not cheap. So they're gonna probably run you a few dollars more than the plastic units such as this. This is plastic. This right here is not plastic. This is aluminum. It can be serviced. I own the equalizers for this, so after 10 years, if the batteries are a little bit off, I can go through and actually equalize all the batteries. And since I have three of them working together, even when I'm discharging 100 amps, 190 amps, the three of them can absorb it because of the Anderson 120 connector. I wanted to quickly share this with you guys because I know there's a lot of people converting their vans and there's a lot to this, but it doesn't have to be as complicated as some manufacturers are making it with the special proprietary plugs, having to buy a Bluetooth module that doesn't work, then having to select the right profile for the battery type and putting in the maximum and minimum voltages with this. None of that is needed. It handles everything. There's nothing to configure. Uh, it's 12 volts native. Additionally, there's a hack with these. You can actually go through and increase the capacity of this anytime. So for example, I can go through and connect this battery to those. And if the battery is low, it'll charge it up. If those batteries are more depleted, it'll go and discharge to them because they have a similar chemistry. Honestly, those units don't have many drawbacks. The only drawback that I really see is the solar is a little bit limited. It's maxed out at 400 watts. But I'm using this for my vehicle solar panels up top. Then I use the one next to it as that one has another 400 watts it can utilize and it gets me by and it handles my complete load. Now, if I wanted to, I can fix all that by simply using this as a buffer and I can make another video for you guys on this. So I'm gonna wind down the video by telling you guys this. I have a whole video on how easy these portable power stations are to hook up. And again, there's no complicated wires. They use Anderson 120 connectors and ethernet cables, literally ethernet cables. So they're bulletproof and they've been used for a very long time. You can find them all different lengths and they're very easy to run. They don't take up a lot of space and they're very inexpensive now. I think you can get an ethernet cable for like $6. So if you're looking for something reliable and tested, I would definitely check out that video on these particular portable power stations that I have as I think you're really gonna like it. All right guys, so it's nighttime and I'm gonna wrap this up by saying the following. Check out the video down below. I think you're really gonna like it. And you can have a lot of fun with 12 volts and it's no longer expensive. And it is very efficient and very easy to configure. Let me know if I missed anything. If the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing as I really do put a lot of time and effort into this. And I'll leave you guys links for the whole van build and some of the products and when you should do what to help you guys out and all that information is free and the only thing I ask in return is if you know somebody that is into van builds maybe consider sharing this with them and I appreciate you guys make it a great day